Welcome to Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. A quick note about the gameplay, because I can't resist talking. Um, the unexceptional gamer thing really comes into light on this gameplay. Uh, I wanted to you know, like get you guys a really super awesome game, but when you're new to a game, that's freaking time consuming, and this was about to be Mail Tuesday. So, uh, so I put up what I had. I have this challenge. It's a new game type, which, you know, Capture the Flag, which I'm not really used to playing, and it's a big map. So as I transition from, like, you know, sort of safe in your own spawn area to theirs, I sometimes get careless along the way and don't realize it's time to be extra careful and really watch my corners, and not that I could do that very well on a new map. Anyway, let's get going to Mail Monday. Woody, you're a cervix-pounding legend, and I really need help. Dear Woody, I hope you read this at all, let alone Mail Monday, even though that would be freaking awesome because I'm a huge fan. But here it goes. I'm 19 and a lot has been going wrong lately, and I could desperately use your advice. You're like a father figure to me. I've nearly failed my senior year in high school and became extremely complacent my final year, losing most of my scholarships and grants I had accumulated. If that's not enough, I managed to fail out of my freshman year in college. Uh, for international people, freshman year is your first year in, in high school or college, mainly due to the fact that I decided to join a fraternity and had literally Literally no time for schoolwork. Now I'm back home. I have no job. I have about $12,000 in loans to repay. My parents are becoming more disappointed as the days pass. And if that isn't enough, I just found out my girlfriend of one year is pregnant. She wants to get an abortion, and I'm somewhat on board, being as she's, how she's still in school and plans to go to college, and we have no way to support the baby. I have a few job offers in the works, but none near enough to support a child and myself. I'm in desperate need, and it feels like my life is falling apart by the hour. Any help would be deeply appreciated. I'm starting to lose hope. So I ask you, Woody, do you have any advice at all? Sorry for the long message. I tried to shorten it. Well, I appreciate that. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, your problems are valid. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the first thing that popped into my head. Whenever I see someone say like, oh my gosh, my life is falling apart, things are terrible, I think, all right, well, I'll be the judge of that. You know, Did, did your best friend just kiss your girlfriend because uh, you're going to make it through. But um, your problems are valid, dude. You know, you've got a pregnant girlfriend, you have, uh, you fell out of college, and um, really it sounds like well, these are two separate problems, but the, the, the lack of success in life, like your failure to thrive, it, you just got disinterested, right? Like long-term serious disinterested in ambition. And you had it, right? You, you had it before your senior year. Things were going along fine and you managed to drag yourself to do what needs to be done to succeed in life. But now not so much you know you did the fraternity thing and for those who've never been to college or, or university for my international people that's what we call it um for those who've never been there here's the thing it, it feels a little like a vacation you know you're moving out of the house and that's a brand new thing to you the only time you've ever left home before this is vacation you're staying in a dorm oftentimes Dude, dorm rooms feel like hotel rooms, just like hotel rooms. And there's cafeterias that feel like restaurants. And they're like the whole experience of leaving your house and going to college feels a lot like vacation. And no one's there to look over your shoulder and make sure that you don't treat it like vacation. Lots of people fail out their freshman year. Lots. And mostly it's just like, not most, there's lots of reasons it can happen. But one of the common ones is they just don't have the motivation. They just don't sort of see themselves putting so forth the kind of effort that it takes to do well in school. Movies make it seem like college is one nonstop party. Sometimes you have older guys who try to convince you like, oh yeah, all the women are easy, all the parties are nonstop, college is really about drinking and partying and it's the best years of, your dude, college is harder than high school. No doubt about it. Make no mistake, you will spend a lot more effort succeeding in college than you ever had to in high school. You're going to have to multitask. You're going to have to divide your time. The reason a college degree is prestigious is that it shows that you have the drive to stick with something difficult for four years. That's what it's really about. It's you know, So anyway, the fact that he failed out his freshman year in college because he joined a fraternity makes perfect sense. They're not actually good for your grades. It's part of their like recruitment tools. Oh yeah, dude, we've got all last year's tests. We can help you study. No. <laughs> Fraternities hurt your grades, period. They, they take a lot of your time and they provide uh, a whole bunch of sort of like-minded people who maybe aren't working very hard. So um, so that's, that's just part of the deal. Where you go from here? Um, the whole abortion thing is really tricky. Like, I get that. Even people who are pro-choice, I feel like mostly 
reluctantly pro-choice. Like, that's just, that's kind of the deal. No one's excited about abortions. You know, no one thinks it's going to be a good day, or does it really without wondering what their alternative life would be. And that doesn't end at the abortion, you know? Six years from now, you will wonder, like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, that that kid I would have had would be entering kindergarten right about now. Um, you know, that that kid I would have had would be, you know, nine years old now, you know, that, that kid, I, like, this is where I would be if we didn't abort that kid. It will be a piece of your memory and your own life story forever because pregnancy is a big deal. And, you know, there you are. So when you make this decision to abort, um, you know, I'm not advising for or against it, really. I think that's a decision that's best made on your own. But I'm educating and I'm letting you know that, you know, while this may or may not be the right call for you, it's never going, it's not an easy call. And, and it's not like a decision, like any of the decisions that you've made so far in life. You know, this is really about, um, you know, a, a, a lifetime commitment to sort of end somebody. And it doesn't happen without second thoughts. So, so you've got that coming to you. Regarding the job stuff, you know, to me, it's downstream of the passion, you know, regardless of what job you get, if you don't like it, if you don't you know, have any drive toward it, you're not going to have a career, right? Having a, a career, something in which you excel at and, and have a passion for and drive towards and, and turn into the full story that is you requires you to kind of like what you're doing at least a little bit you know you don't want to rise up the ranks at dunder mifflin the paper company and just hate your job forever right you know it, it, you don't want to be jim you know working there in sales doing the phones wishing that he was somewhere else you know looking at the clock waiting for five all the time you know, the, that's a soul-sucking existence that you don't want to be yours. You need to find a job or something for which you have at least a little bit of interest. Uh, it, it, <laughs> some jobs that you know, aren't interesting, like accounting, right? People who like accounting actually like accounting. Sounds obvious, right? But you know, they see it as puzzle solving. They find it interesting. They enjoy the, the prestige that comes with having like a professional white collar job and a skill set. And, and they like the, the fact like, look, if you're a CPA, you are at least to some extent a winner. You know, you, you've got a real job. You've got something going on. You've got it figured out. A CPA is an accountant. I don't know if that's an international term, but it means you're an accountant who's passed all the tests and the boards and you can have your own business and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you are that guy, it means that you like achieve some level of success in your life. And that in itself can make you feel good. You know, I think doctors, you know, like part of the job is healing people and that that's kind of cool. But a big perk of being a doctor, a huge one is the fact that like you've accomplished something that not everybody can and that makes you feel good about yourself that is part of wh where you need to get yeah that's where you need to be um you know take your job but figure out your long-term plan and and where you want to be i, I thought this was a jump <laughs> um figure out where you want to be in five years in 10 years and and you know what you actually aspire to do in life I, you know nail it what do you want to be you want to be a gym teacher you know, that's a cool job. Do you want to be uh, work in film? Do you want to work? You, know, you can do that, actually. Um, like, it, it, find out something that you'd like to get and go get it. That's, you know, the, the short version of this. Uh, do not just sign up for a soul-sucking job and, um, you know, never aspire for anything else. That, yeah, that would be a shame. Come out as gay at school. Woody, I'm, and I, I blacken this out for his own anonymity, to keep him private, <laughs> anonymity, I can't say it. Um, but he's a teenager and he goes to an all-boys secondary school, high school for international people. Total fan of the show. Um, I'm gay and I'm completely sure I have no attraction to girls. I haven't come out to anyone, but there's a guy I like who I think might be gay due to the way he acts around me. E.g. he's all huggy and flirty. I was wondering if I should come out to a few of my close friends, including him. I might be able to get in a boyfriend-boyfriend relationship rather than just a few friends. I know you say wait until university or college before coming out, but there are other gay guys in my school and they don't get, and he says hard done. I, I guess that's like bullied. No, they don't get hard done by or bullied at all and i know he's not in a relationship with anybody else i just want to know if you think i should come out and have a possibility of a relationship or if it's better to wait and miss out on the possibility i don't mind if you put it on mail monday love the vids keep up the awesome work 
All right, so as this gentleman already knows, my standard advice is not to come out until college. Uh, in college, it seems that people are better, you know, they're better equipped to deal with gay people. You know, they, they're mature about it. They get like, oh yeah, I like girls, he likes guys, whatever, you know, it's a similar type thing, but different. In college, they're sort of ready for that. Not everybody, but it's better than it is in high school, where all this, you know, it seems like people are constantly looking for a reason to give other people a hard time. That's, that's solved as you get older. Um, when you're in the office, by the way, like when you're an adult adult, like I don't think anybody cared who was gay where I were. Like, we've got other things to worry about. You know, when you're an adult, nobody cares if you're fat. Nobody cares if you're bald. Nobody cares if you're gay. You know, it, it, in my world anyway, it, people cared about what was in your heart. And, and, you know, if you're at the office, how good a worker you are and whether I have to carry your ass. Um, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't give a hoot if, uh, if you liked guys or girls. Like, that just, that wouldn't be something that we cared about. That's the advantage of coming out as an adult. Uh, you get more people with that mindset. Whereas in high school, I think a lot of people think of you as the gay guy as opposed to a guy who's gay, you know, to, like, you know, you'd be the bald guy if you were bald in high school, as opposed to, you like, one, you know, no one really giving a crap about your hair. <laughs> so, um, uh, anyway, if you're in a school where other people have tread this path already and it's gone okay for them, then that kind of opens the door for you somewhat. I wish you didn't mention that they were close friends of yours. If they were, I'd suggest talking to them first and seeing if it's really as okay in their heads as it looks from the outside. You know, you're like, oh, it hasn't been too bad. Right, but you know, you might not be privy to the looks they get, to the vibes, you know, to the things that have happened. You're like, maybe they're just not sharing the downsides with you. Just, just a thought. And um, another option would be to just come out to the guy you like and see if he's gay too. You know, you think he is, maybe he is, but uh, you know, I, I don't want you to miss out on something because you're scared but know that you can't go back in the closet. And when you come out, you're coming all the way out. You know, you might have this idea that you have separate lives. Like, you know, there's the people at school, the people at work, which you might not have, and family. But when a secret like this is released, you can't trust all of them to keep it in their own little worlds. You're going, if, when you come out at school, you'll be coming out at home. The people that you have Thanksgiving dinner with will be talking about this. They'll be knowing it. It's, it's going to come out all the way. And just be advised that when you come out, you come all the way out. And don't do that unless you're ready to do that. That's, that's my thought on this. And, uh, and I hope it works out really well for you. <laughs> you know, I think it sucks that, um, you know, just your orientation will at some point in your life make your life a little bit harder than it should be just because people are stupid. And, uh, um, you know, that, that's just the, you know, the cross that, that you carry. That's, that's your deal. But, um, I hope it works out well for you. I'm going to paraphrase this one in the interest of time, but essentially he says, I'm 16. It'd be really difficult for my family to afford college. And I'd like to have a career in video or film, maybe make a living off YouTube. Do I need to go to college to do that? All right, do you need college? Not necessarily, not for film and video. It's super helpful. They will make you better at your job. Freddie Wong, Devin Supertramp, Captain Sparkles, they all went to college and applied it and made YouTube a career for themselves. It, it, they, that, that is where they teach you to perfect the art. Having said that, it is possible to succeed in this world without going to college for it. Lots of other people have done it. You just have to do it really hard and you have to be self-taught and you have to have a passion for it and a motivation to bring yourself to the level of expertise that it takes. And people expect more and more on YouTube all the time. So it's possible. You're 16 now. Do it and see how it goes. See, you know, Watch your own work and see if it looks like a pro's work. If it doesn't, maybe you need some education on the topic and it will help you a ton. Um, you don't have to go to college to do creative work, film, art, uh, photography, but it can be helpful. It'll help you a lot. And the other thing I wanted to throw in there is, you know, you don't have to decide whether you're a collegiate person or not at 18. If you find yourself at 22 and you're not happy with the way that your life is going, you can still go to college. The door doesn't shut ever.